Welcome to the channel, y'all. I go by Sandman Jones, and today you are going to be watching me dance and watching me talk while we talk about how Brandon Sanderson writes feminine characters. So, a uh, really quick rundown. If you are not familiar with Brandon Sanderson, he's probably the most popular fantasy book author out there right now. I know people talk, if you're not a fantasy reader, you probably think it's George R. R. Martin, but honestly, everyone's pissed at him because he's not going to finish his series, and we just kind of have all moved on. Um... But yeah, the fantasy genre has historically really struggled with having strong feminine characters in its book, in, in the stories. Um, and, you know, we could trace this back and back and back, but we're not going to. We're just going to talk about an example of an author who is of a privileged social identity. Brandon Sanderson is a straight cis white man like myself, uh, like a lot of other fantasy authors and just authors in general. And we're going to be talking about how we can see him overcoming his whatever biases he may have um, in order to write better feminine characters. Uh, and before you say, oh, he doesn't have any biases, every man has biases about women. Just like every white person has biases about non-white people. Sorry, y'all, this is just kind of the society we live in. There's a lot of ways to overcome that through education and unlearning. Um, and I'll leave some book recommendations in the description if you're interested. Um, but anyways, so we're going to be using three examples from Brandon Sanderson's Cosmere, which is kind of the interconnected universe in which his books take place. Um, the best way to think about it, if you're not familiar with this stuff, it's kind of set up, like, set up like a comic book universe. You have, except that there's kind of different series taking place on different planets, but you do get some overlap. Some characters from one series will show up in another. Um, so it's kind of like a comic book universe. It's just really cool. Um, lots of awesome action, great characters, stuff like that. And the three characters we are going to be talking about is Vin from Mistborn Era 1, Shallan from the Stormlight Archive, and Navani from the Stormlight Archive. Um, now, for the record, this is more or less rephrasing a chapter from my upcoming book about writing, um, you know, writing more inclusively from a place of privilege, because surprisingly, there's not a book about that. There's a lot of books about, here's how to not be a racist, sexist asshole when you're writing about my, my identity, but there's nothing from a from the identity of a privileged person talking about how to break down your privilege and approach this um so this is basically paraphrasing and summarizing the chapter how to write better feminine characters um so let's start with vin um vin from mistborn era one is an incredibly incredibly badass warrior oh my god dude she is fucking frightening when it comes to her battle tactics and just how she goes about doing this stuff like if anyone from different you know book series wanted me dead if it was vin i would just be like all right i'll wait in my apartment we're just gonna let this happen um she's just so damn powerful um so vin is a strong female lead in this series she's a young woman about you know 16 ish when the story begins and she is really, really good at fighting and killing, which is a traditionally masculine thing. And, you know, there's a lot of stories where you have women who are badass warriors, but often those stories don't maintain connection with what we're going to call feminine energy, which is basically the opposite of masculine energy. Um, and so if you're a man, think about what you consider manly, and now reverse engineer that into what you consider uh, feminine and what is positive examples of femininity. So Vin, yeah, she's really, really good at fighting and killing, which is a traditionally masculine thing, but she still is in touch with her femininity. Yeah, she like she's very good at fighting and killing, but she also likes dressing up fancy and going to balls. She also likes making herself look pretty. She also has a male love interest who and you know, she's also a teenage girl who struggles with, you know, teenage girl things. Um she's also, you know, from the streets and grew up pretty much fighting for her life every day so she's pretty damaged too but that's not really part of her femininity that's just part of her character part of what gives her character depth um so yeah vin is very good at masculine things but she is also in touch with her femininity and the story shows that a lot um and there's also 
the fact that she, she does fight and kill, but she does it to protect those she loves. She does not do it um, as a show of power or demonstration of how powerful she is, except once. I'm not going to go into details um, because, you know, spoilers and not everyone's read the series, but there is, there is one time where she goes off and does some killing in a traditionally masculine way as a show of power as a sh as a demonstration of you should be afraid of me and you should do what i want because you're afraid of me um which guys you might not like this but that is often how we go about doing things um so when she does that it tears her apart because she is losing touch with her feminine energy when she is doing that and so yeah there's a lot more to it but that's a quick rundown of how brandon sanderson wrote vin um and this is pretty early on in his career this was like i think the second book that he got that he published under his own um you know as his own books because he also finished the wheel of time that's a whole different thing i'll talk about wheel of time in a different video um but as he progresses through his career, we can see him improve in his ability to write good feminine characters. Uh, characters that are actually representative of, you know, feminine energy. And we can see him move on from, as much as I love Vin, she's an awesome character, but seeing feminine characters who are not known for their fighting and killing. And so we're going to get into Shallan first. Um, Shalon is an artist. She also has some crazy strong social anxiety and later on some other shit that we're not going to get into. Um, and she is also a young woman and her storyline is largely focused around her learning and the way she is very self-educated, the way she has a desire to learn, the way she has a desire to express herself artistically and in other means, um, her being very, very smart and just using her wits and her knowledge to kind of explore the world around her and learn about the world around her and also take agency over the world around her. Um, this is actually something I should have brought up earlier, but it's really, really important if you are going to write a feminine character in your story that they have agency in the story, which basically means it's not just that the story can't happen without them, it's that they have control over what happens. Um, and they're not just going and running side quests and shit like that. Um, for our main male characters, um, this is actually kind of this was a problem in the first draft of the Funk City Chronicles, which will be self-published sometime this month. It's my book, um, and you know, in the first draft, that was the she was by far the weakest character because I was trying to make her integral to the story, but she didn't have agency over what happens. She was more or less running side quests for the boys. Didn't really turn out well. I rewrote the character a few times in subsequent drafts, and I think she actually turned out to be really badass. Um, but anyways, let's return back to Shalon. So, Shalon is very in touch with her femininity. She is a young woman. She is an artist. She is a scholar. Um, she is self self educated. She is very very driven. She is also as pretty much any good book character. She's also experienced a lot of trauma, but we're not going to get into all of that now. Um, because spoilers once again um, and so here we can see an example of a awesome badass feminine character because she does some really cool badass things and pretty much none of her most badass moments involve her swinging a sword at bad guys nothing like that um, we do see a little bit of combat involving her at some point no spoilers just we see a little bit of that but it's not her swinging a sword at bad guys that really stands out as her badass moments. Her badass moments are moments of discovery, of learning, of growth, of, you know, focusing around the things that make her the character that she is. Hey, it's editing me here. I just wanted to cut in because I realized I forgot to mention something very important, which is that the things that Shalon is known for as her character, to be very integral to her character, are traditionally feminine things. 
um, artistic expression, learning, um, that type of stuff is in our society more traditionally associated with being feminine than with being masculine, at least depending who you ask. Um, and the same thing with Navani, the things that makes Navani a strong character, the things that really define her, which we'll get to in a bit, kind of like being a scientist, stuff like that, um, and being a governess and all of that are often, can be um, considered more feminine qualities. So the things that makes these characters badass characters is their femininity and their feminine energy. And we're going to get back to the actual video now. Ugh. Getting back to the actual video now. Thank you for your patience. Um, and, you know, he wrote this character later. We can see him improve in his ability to overcome his own biases and write better feminine characters. Um, so we've covered Vin, we've covered Shalon, and now the last uh, one we are covering today is Navani. Now, full disclosure, Navani doesn't become a major character until later on in the series. Um, it's about the fourth book where we really get to see her shine, but she's present and we get to know her a little bit. So Navani is a mother. Um, this is really important for the fact that, you know, if we're writing feminine characters, we shouldn't just be showing young women. Um, I know young people are more exciting as protagonists in books, especially in fantasy, but there's many different types of male characters, many different types of female characters. Um, and Navani is a mother, and that maternal energy is part of her femininity, part of how she stays in touch with her feminine energy throughout this series. So something really big about this is not only is she um, a mother, but she is also a governor of sorts. Um, she is a leader of the people and she does a lot to take care of the people she is also a scientist and she really wants to figure things out and make discoveries and she does she figures out some crazy shit um but the fact that she is a mother plays into these things we can see that maternal energy coming across in how she cares for her people the way she is able to kind of focus on the bigger picture and not always do the thing that everyone's going to like but do the thing that is best for the group um making hard decisions while still leading with love with love at her heart with love at the core of how she interacts with the people around her and then also, she is a scientist, and when she is in the lab, she really is so focused on finding that next piece of the puzzle, finding that discovery, and I would say her maternal energy kind of takes a side note here, um, because she just gets so wrapped up in what she is doing, but, you know, I'm actually going to take that last part back, because she does want to use her inventions and the things she discovers for the good of everyone um, as a way to take care of people as a way to allow people to grow and we see this come across in her actions in her internal dialogue in her character development and when you combine all of these things she is a really awesome badass feminine character um, she has some really cool shit that happens in the fourth book but no spoilers um and you know through all of this we can see the author brandon sanderson who is a white man slowly overcome the biases that society has taught him that's taught all of us too about women about what makes a woman strong blah 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 um and through this we can see him write better feminine characters and we can see this come across as positive representation um and yeah that's about it for this video at least um if you like this content please be sure to let me know what you think in the comments below i love to hear what y'all think and kind of get some back and forth and interaction also be sure to subscribe for more content like this my channel is very small right now and subscribing will really really help me out and also help out our ability to have conversations like this get these messages to a wider people get a wider group of people get more perspectives on this um, so thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed the dancing. Hope you enjoyed the talking. And I will catch you in the next video. Peace.